fam, I think it's time I film a video in the original style, just holding the snakes, talking about them. And what better way than to start the beautiful snouted cobra named Annie. Banded snouted cobra because not all snouted cobras are banded. Some are uniform pattern and I'll show you what one with a uniform pattern looks like. But the banded ones, to me, one of the most beautiful cobras, if not the most beautiful cobras on earth. With cobras, something as simple as banding make them incredible, in my opinion. Because a lot of them just have a uniform or bland type coloration. But wow, look at her. Awesome. You see how big she's getting? They can get eight foot or more, massive. Imagine Annie, this sweet girl, has such a wonderful personality and beautiful as a full grown adult. I can't wait for that. Usually it's a little sad when cobras get bigger because I think they're so cute as babies, but Annie is the exception. I cannot wait till she's a full grown adult. Awesome. And when they're babies, the banded phase, the bands don't really show. As they age, you'll start to see faint bands. And then as they continue to shed and grow, the bands show up like this. But not all of them are this beautiful. Some still kind of dull in coloration and not as vibrant, but she is just unreal. Annie, you are awesome. You are beautiful and I love you. And this is dedicated to Jesse, who loves Annie the Banded Snouted Cobra. Wow. Here's another species of cobra, which is also found in Africa, just like Annie the Banded Snouted Cobra and also has bands like Annie, but this time black and white. And all of them are banded because this is a zebra spitting cobra. Notice the goggles. So the difference is that Annie does not spit venom. Oreo, the zebra spitting cobra, does spit venom. And that's used as a form of defense. One of the only snakes that use venom for defense or spitting cobras, but they still capture prey by biting and injecting venom. And they can still bite in defense as well and inject venom that way. So they don't only just spit venom. I notice that some people do have a confusion about spitting cobras thinking that that's a way that they capture prey. Imagine that, spitting, and that's how they capture prey. Be pretty cool, huh? Very simple for them. But no, it doesn't work that way. It's just used for defense. Look at this amazing snake. Look at that black head. Wow, Oreo is just awesome. You can see that little kink right there, kind of close to where my hand is. Oreo was being sold as a feeder because when he was born, him and a few siblings had tons of kinks on the body. Didn't think that they would survive. So it was being sold as a feeder and I got four of them because I wanted to give them a chance. All four survived. Gave the other three to friends. Oreo I kept because he's just so, so beautiful. The most beautiful out of all four. Look at him, awesome. Now he will be dedicated to my friend Matthew who loves Oreo as well as Paxton, friend's young son who loves Oreo as well. Look at him staying perfectly still. Wow. You know Plumpkin, the black spitting cobra? I know these common names are confusing, but that is a subspecies of Oreo. Jet black on the top of the body and the bottom, black all around. Always what I envisioned with an all black cobra. Amazing snake. Maybe we'll see her in this video. I don't know, I guess you'll have to wait and see. Oreo, love you, you're awesome. You're the coolest dude I know. Now we have someone very special to me. Lila the monocle cobra. Look at this angel, look how big she is. She's amazing. The reason she's so special to me is because this is a snake that I've had the longest, probably. Could be mistaken though, but anyways, look at her. Incredible, wild type coloration. This is what they'll look like in the wild, but there is variation depending on where they're found. So there is some differences. Where they get the name monocle cobra, that single circle, like a monocle. Hers kind of is not connected at the very top of that circle. Some are, some are less connected. Some don't even have really a monocle pattern. So there's slight variation with the hood pattern as well. Even banding, she has a little bit of bands. Can't really see it now, but when she was younger, it was very visible. But she's awesome, I love her so much. 
She used to be my best snake personality wise, would never hood up. She's not hooded up now, not being defensive. But ever since we moved into this house, she's more likely to be defensive when in the past at my old house, she wasn't defensive at all. She wouldn't even hood up. It was very rare that she would do that. So it's unfortunate, but simple things like moving locations can cause a change in their behavior. You've got to be aware of that and also adjust to it. I love her still no matter what, and I'm just so happy that she's growing nice and big. Incredible. With monocle cobras, there's lots of different morphs, genetic mutations, different colorations, all types of things like albino, like leucistic, pastel, sunset, so many different types that I couldn't begin to name them because I'm not that knowledgeable on morphs. But they're like the ball pythons of the cobra world. So many different morphs, so many different colorations and whatnot. Random genetic mutations like that can happen in the wild, but they're bred specifically in captivity. And the likelihood of a wild one, like a wild albino surviving to adulthood is unlikely because they stand out more. Predators can see them. Lots of animals feed on snakes, especially baby snakes. So the chance of survival in general for any is unlikely and not being able to blend in with the environment makes it that much more unlikely. Lila, you too are very amazing, very beautiful, and I love you. Look at them just cooperating today, staying perfectly still. Wow, but it's getting hot in here, so I'm gonna take a little break, but why am I even mentioning that? Because you won't even know, because it'll cut right to it. All right, it's about to get loud. I wanted to capture some clips with the actual camera. What better way than with ones that I'm not gonna be able to talk over. Toothless Zilla, I hope you're here and ready to see a snake named after you. Let's check it out right now. Still gonna be loud. This time, Frostina, right? Now. Now, of course, it's going to be loud in here since I've disturbed the noisemakers. But thankfully, Frostina and Toothless Villa's new boyfriend doesn't seem to rattle that much. He did at first, but I guess now that he's settling in, he's good to go. Nice and quiet, thankfully. 
But geez, that's one of the annoying things about rattlesnakes is that some will make a ton of noise. Finally, some peace and quiet. Another thing is even though Toothless Zilla and Frostina are both quick to strike and defend themselves, they'll still do everything to avoid confrontation. First of all, rattlesnakes evolved the rattle for a warning to potential predators or just big hoofed animals to let them know where they are so they don't get stepped on. That's one way they try to avoid confrontation. Another is that even though those will rattle, they still back away slowly. So that's the unfortunate thing about those two. They're both super defensive, but still, like I said, if you're out in the wild and see a rattlesnake, it's rattling and doing all this stuff, it's so simple, just leave them alone. Even if they stand their ground and don't back away, they let you know where they are, walk away. Very simple animals, and that is why I love them. They do everything to avoid confrontation. They just wanna live their life. Wow, awesome. What should his name be? Oswald? Eisenhower? Jebediah? Let me know some suggestions. Hope y'all enjoyed this video and seeing some of the snakes, especially the ones you haven't seen for a while, like the Western Diamondback rattlesnakes and meeting the new male Western Diamondback rattlesnake who you've never seen before. Leave some name suggestions for them. And if you don't mind, click that like button. And if you aren't subscribed, click subscribe. But I love y'all. I want to give a big shout out to my channel members. If you want to support, become a channel member, get early access to videos, exclusive videos, and a shout out at the end. Big shout out to my Patreon members as well. If you want to support me over there, you also get early access to videos, exclusive videos, and a shout out at the end. And a big thank you to those that donate in other ways. Love y'all so much. I'll be back as soon as possible. Take care.